All right, guys. Nice to see you back at the channel. This is an automated cat flap. Let me show you how it works first, and then I will give you a tour. So, when I flick the power switch, it lifts it up. How good is that? I can't believe how this really simple device has worked so well on the first attempt. It's got some refinements that it needs, but it's just about there. Up here, we have just a pulley and a belt. And the belt is just a piece of neoprene. Uh, and all I did was I took some thin zinc wire and made some staples. And you'd be surprised how well that works. I've made a few belts this way, nothing industrial, uh, but it works practically doesn't slip off the pulley or make a super loud noise like you'd expect it just works now for the pulley I don't own a lathe so this is just rough cut on the bandsaw and then nailed to a piece of wood and then sort of rotated in front of the disc sander so that the disc sander sands it round and then also because I don't have a lathe and I needed a sort of circular feature I just thought well a couple of nails will do the job just fine and they do, they work really well, so I'm quite pleased with that, as it is. Uh, and then the motor that I'm using is just out of a printer that I pulled apart a long time ago. Now, what I've done to this brass gear, because I couldn't pull it off, I, I gave it a go but I didn't want to damage it, is I've actually rounded it over so that it's got a crown, you might be able to see that. There we go. So you can see I've given it a very slight crown. And the way I did that was by just plugging it into the power. So it was spinning nice and fast. And I brought it up against my Dremel, which is in my Dremel clamp. I highly recommend building yourself a Dremel clamp, just something really simple. All I've done is drilled an 8mm hole, screwed some 5 16 rod into it. That's all that's holding that in. And then made a little bridging block some thingies and then when the Dremel was clamped in there I just slid these wedges into there with a bit of wood glue on the bottom and that holds it really firmly in place it's awesome I use this all the time um, to, for really detailed stuff so that's what I did I just held the motor gently up against this and slowly ground it into a nice curve and then used a little bit of sandpaper Weirdly enough, the crown on the pulleys will actually help the flat belt stay on. There's something about the way it stretches the belt as it tries to come off that kind of steers the belt back onto the pulley. Once the door reaches the top, I need to design some way of holding it there for a period of time to let the cat go through the door. As you can see, just from the built-in resistance of the motor and the pulleys, the door drifts down nice and slowly once it's been opened, so that's a good thing. Now the other trick with this thing, and I can't really show it to you when it's assembled, but there is a load cell in there. And the purpose of that is to act as a sort of security measure. It will weigh my cats. And uh, because because they weigh very different, Ori is uh, 3.3 kilos and Peach is 4.5 or something. So they're very easy to distinguish by weight. And uh, I'm hoping that I will similarly be able to distinguish my cats from other cats in the neighborhood and prevent them from getting in the house. And obviously there'll be a real-time clock in order to control the hours that my cats are allowed in and out. So here's the platen that will go inside the house. This is what the load cell is screwed onto that you could see in the bottom of the machine. Uh, this is just a very lightweight uh, bit of wood with a, a rim around it to make it rigid. And it sort of is rigid enough. It's not, it's not great. It deflects quite a bit. Let me show you. So here is the entrance to the cat flap. There's the, the door. I'll cover up this, this end here a bit and decorate it, probably paint it black or something on the inside, I don't know. 
but uh, this is the platen that the cats stand on and the whole thing is just supported by the load cell in the middle which I'll show you in a second you can see here that there's quite a lot of deflection in it because it's only supported right in the middle and I haven't put heaps of supporting you know um, beams on the bottom of this plate but you know for the weight of a cat that's not a big deal I don't think that'll have any impact on the long-term strength of the the object so I'm just gonna leave it like that and see how we go I'll reinforce it later if necessary and now we can see on the bottom so this is the load cell here I'll show you a load cell a bit later on outside of the machine and it's just bolted on with M4 screws through this piece of wood I'm hoping this piece of wood when I glue it onto this platform will stiffen it up a little bit it's all just held on with those two screws at the moment uh, and then there's a kind of bridge here and this is what uh, connects the platen um, to the frame so that's where we're at so far and uh, I'm mad keen to hook this up to an Arduino and get it uh, actually detecting cats and opening and closing. You probably can't see it very well here but this is actually the cat flap I made in my other video. I'll put a link up here um, and rather than use the dog flap that was installed on my new house uh, I just kind of chopped off the, the cat flap and installed it there just because that's what the cats are used to and the door on it is quite significantly lighter than what the, the dog flap was and I've added these foam pads on the corners to stop their tails from getting pinched. So the idea of the big box is that it will just go up against this window on the outside and the white uh, door that you saw will slide up and down here and then there'll be no more of this uh, adjusting the, the flippy knobs at the bottom you won't have to do that anymore in the morning and the evening the cats will always just have the correct access policy this is the new workspace by the way it's uh, pitch black out here at the moment so kind of difficult to show you the whole lot but uh, it's a bit more squishy than it was before and the tin walls and that window over there probably mean there's a bit more noise for the neighbor so I'm gonna have to stop work for tonight but boy am I chuffed at how that worked that was that was great so this is the neoprene rubber that I used I've just cut a strip off the edge um, I don't really know what this is sold for. It's got a sort of thin layer of fabric in there that I'm never going to be able to focus on. Anyway, that's what I've used. It's not very stretchy, but it's got a soft, sort of tacky, grippy rubber feel to it. It's good stuff. It's actually the same rubber that I used to make the feet underneath here. I glued it to the bottom of these metal feet. Alright guys, so this is actually a load cell. Now a load cell is just a block of aluminium and two strain gauges. There's one stuck on here and there's another one stuck just on the back here. You can't really see what it is. It, it, it's a resistor that's in a zigzag pattern and it's glued very firmly onto the aluminium so that when you push down here, it ever so slightly deforms the resistor and changes its resistance a little bit. Now, these two wires put current through those resistors, and they are wired together and configured in such a way that uh, because of the current flowing through them, there is a small change in voltage measured across these two wires. And this little circuit here, all that does is amplify that tiny little signal and feed it as a digital signal through to an Arduino. And at the moment, all this Arduino is doing is sending out the value from the strain gauge out to the computer. So let me hook that up for a second, and I'll show you what the output on the screen looks like. So what I've got here is a little programming board. 
Uh, it is an FTDI programmer for an Arduino Pro Mini. That's one of them loose over there. And all you got to do with one of these is get yourself a regular USB. I don't know what type that is. They have so many different kinds now. One of those cables and plug it in. So you just take this and we can just rest it in there. That's enough of a connection generally to program the Arduino. And um, if I go on the computer and open up the Arduino app, there it is. And I go tools, serial monitor, bring that a bit closer. There we go. So the strain gauge is now reading in kilograms. So I have here a test kilogram. I'll try and balance that on there. And as I've done that, it now reads pretty close to a kilogram. That's that's quite impressive. So I've taken the kilogram off and I'll just press with my finger. Just very lightly pressing, almost just touching it. It's uh, it's pretty amazing, hey? Good accuracy. I should be able to get all the way up to about 5 kilos on this strain gauge before it'll be a bit too heavy. It might damage the strain gauge after that. I think I might make this video a two-parter. I'm just getting back into doing YouTube videos after moving house, and uh, there's nothing more motivating <laughs> to make more YouTube videos than publishing the first one. So I need to just publish one, and then I will be back in a very short time, hopefully, with an update on this project. Thank you all for watching anyway, and I hope I don't disappoint. This is going to be a cool project. I'm really excited to not have to open and close the cat door for my cats every morning. Thank you, everyone. You have a good one.